Hey everybody, welcome back, Todd here. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. In today's video, I'm gonna be installing this Psychic Rider SRTP300. It is a tire pressure monitoring system. Here's what the monitor looks like. I'm excited to do this because if you're like me, if you're riding a bike that has bags in the rear, you know that checking that tire pressure is a real pain in the keister. You got to get down on your hands and knees and crawl up under there or remove your, even if you remove your bags, you have to crawl down there. So I'm excited about being able to just look on my dashboard of my bike and see what the tire pressure is. If I'm on a ride, if it does, uh, you get a leak or something like that, it'll alert you. So, hey, from a safety point of view, I'm excited about that too. So let me take you through the different parts that are included in the package when you buy it, the tools that you're going to need, and let's go ahead and get the install done. So come on with me. Let's take a look at the different components that come in the box with this Psychic uh, Rider SRTP300 you know it's a tire pressure monitoring system so really pretty basic stuff there's your manual great instructions on how to install it how to program it there is your monitor right there here you go front and rear and they're both labeled one has an r on it one has an f on it the nuts just slip over your valve stem and go underneath this you crank that on till it's tight then you use this wrench to bring this up and snug it up against the cap and you're good to go that way it's on there nice and firm it's not going to come loose nobody's going to steal it on you without having a wrench to work with and you're good to go this is just a usb cord which goes in to charge the monitor there's a, a charger right there and one full charge is supposed to last you an entire riding season. And according to the manual, the batteries that come inside of these are like a, a watch battery. And they should be good for a couple of years. And uh, so, yeah. And those are obviously changeable. So when and if they go dead on you, you can change the batteries out on those. So... That's really all there is to it. Okay, let's take a look at the hardware, the mounting hardware that comes with this SRTP300. And so in the description on Amazon, they say that it will fit up to an inch and a quarter bar, but there's no way. Um, first of all, I've already taken it to the bike and the thing that you'd have to do is it'd have to be that far apart, but the bend or the curve on the bar would not even fit in there because those are too small. So if you're hoping, like I was, that you'll be able to adapt this and put it on your Harley Davidson inch and a quarter uh, handlebar, forget it. It's not going to happen. So what I've done is I've had to go out spend approximately 10 bucks and get a different mount which is fine because i have chrome bars and everything i uh, prefer not to have the black anyhow so i'll take you over to the bike and let me show you what i'm talking about all right so here's the other piece that i purchased let me see if i can put it on there with one hand and film it all right bam there you go and that's plenty as a matter of fact it's got a little bit of slop that's why they give you a clear plastic uh, rubber piece that fits in there and it'll grip right on there. So there's your answer right there. Makes a nice contact point. So obviously we have the ability in the Sport Glide to pop that fairing off quite easily. So for mounting this and all that, I'll pop that fairing off and we'll be in good shape. One other hardware issue that we're going to have. So there's the screw that holds it on the back, right? Well, guess what? Sticking it through there, getting it into here, is going to require a longer bolt. Let me show you. Okay, so I took the bolt out of there. There's the stubby little bolt that they provide you with. No way, no how is that going to fit. Hey, fortunately for me, 
I've got another one that's much longer that I'd taken off when I did something, put one other mod on or something, and I ended up with that. So it's a perfect fit, perfect thread fit. And I may have to add another washer to it, but it's going to fit perfectly. So be advised, not only will you need the bracket, but you're going to end up needing to get a longer bolt to hold that thing on there. And on top of that, neither bolt, that one or the other one, will fit through my top hole there. So I got to bore that out just a smidge to get that bolt through there to hold that on. Not a big deal. Let's take care of that right now. Yeah, all right, here we go. Let's see if that'll fit. Perfecto mundo. One down, one to go. Okay, here we go. So I've got the bracket drilled out. I've got the longer screw put in. Okay, I know somebody's gonna ask what's the size of the screw or the bolt that I put in there. So it looks to me like sixteenth in a sixteenth of an inch shy of an inch, so it would be fifteen sixteenths. Okay, I'm getting ready to install my bracket. So I just went ahead and put some painter's tape around there, around the bars, just so the bars aren't going to get scratched. So then I'll add the bracket. Okay, the bracket's on. You can see that it attaches right there with a uh, just a screw with an Allen wrench head on it. They provide you with the Allen wrench. Comes with the packet. So that's all firmly on. And I made sure that it was aligned kind of in the same angle as my other uh, Bluetooth monitor. So that's all tightened up. Now we just have to go ahead and attach the monitor from the back side. Okay, our monitor is attached. You can see the screw in the back, Allen wrench. Going around. Lined up nicely there. Yeah. Looks good. So, okay, we're on to installing the rest of the system. Okay, I've already installed the rear, but here's what we've got. You've got the cap, you've got the nut, and a tool. So, let's go ahead and see what we can do here. So, you're just going to go ahead and thread this nut on to the valve stem. Take your cap. Install it nice and tight. Go ahead and run that nut up to the uh, the valve stem or the cover, and then use the tool to snug that nut right up, nice and tight, so it's not going to vibrate loose and nobody's going to steal it. And just like that, it's on. Okay, the whole system is synced up. Monitor is showing that it is 50 degrees in the shop and the tire pressure is 36 in the front, 39 in the rear, showing that it's actually 52 degrees in the rear. Not sure why that would be, but nonetheless. So there you go. And as far as defaults and what have you, uh, I'll go through and program it later i just wanted to get it all synced up but yeah i'm pretty happy with it so you leave that on and then that will when there's no movement it'll just automatically shut off when there's any kind of vibration at all that'll pop back on and it'll come to life and basically you really don't have to do anything with it if you need to you just pop the um valve covers off of there and put air in it just like you ordinarily would and then pop them back on and you're good to go. But this will save me now from having to, you know, get on my hands and knees and crawl under there and check the rear tire with those bags on there. I'll put my fairing back on and see how it all looks together. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks good. Got the fairing on. And the windshield, obviously, so there's the 
final how it sits on the bars. Walk around from here. I like it. Well, okay, that's going to do it for this video. The installation again of the psychic uh, tire pressure monitoring system. I'll put a link in the description down below if you're interested in more information on that. I appreciate you again tagging along as always. If you do me a favor and hit that like button, it helps me out. Subscribe if you haven't already. And then we'll see you back here on the next one.